So, Paul, tell us about uh, the, 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 the man we want to talk about tonight. Okay, this is uh, Jack Berenger, and uh, Jack was a um, critical thinking teacher at the College of the Sequoias for many years. But he, Jack, was um, he's more most well known for his um, series of books called Past Shock, which is the uh, uh, the opposite of Alvin Toffler's Future Shock. And uh, Past Shock was uh, the idea behind it was that we were visited in ancient times. And we, you know, the gods came down and, you know, very much like what Zachariah Sitchin talks about is that basically we were uh, transformed in a certain way and it turned out that we ended up fighting wars for them. Uh, uh, religion was created, according to Jack, religion was created by the gods in order to keep us under their realm and to keep us under their control. So... um What's really interesting is that uh, Jack was the most curious person I'd ever known. He, as a grown adult, he was just as curious as a young child, whereby if somebody wrote a book that was an amazing book about all this kind of stuff, he made it a point to go and find that person and sit with them and talk with them. Not find them and talk to them on the phone and not just, you know, read their other books. He would go and find each and every one of these people and sit down and, and talk to them to just, you know, really pick their brains. And Jack was really good at that. He knew how to communicate well with people. And, yeah. uh, <laughs> he and, sure uh, did. My God, he talked with so many different people. When you sit and talk with them, we go out for coffee at night sometimes, with uh, you and I and Jack and sometimes other friends, uh, he would sit and talk for hours about all kinds of interesting writers and famous people, famous authors and, uh, and researchers and scientists that he personally knew and uh, would go to meet and sit and talk with them. And my God, what a, what a, a gold mine of actual oh, hands-on experience with all kinds of subjects, which are, are really, you know, like I said today, so many people in America don't even know exist. Well, what a Jack great... was on the cutting edge. <laughs> he was. And actually, he was so uh, really good with people that he convinced the uh, people who ran the college to allow him to teach all of the stuff like this in his critical thinking classes. Yeah, and yeah. he opened the minds of so many people. I'm sure there's people out there listening that had him as a teacher. And he, he actually uh, made friendships with some of the students that lasted a lifetime where he stayed in touch with people because he absolutely transformed people's lives. He woke people up. And he, the great thing about College of the Sequoias was that they, act, they, they allowed him to do that. And so um, what's really interesting is that he, he was a seminary graduate. He graduated from, from, well, actually, I'm not sure if he even made it all the way through because what happened in seminary, yeah, actually, he did make it all the way through. Here's what happened. He, um, he asked way too many questions. He was, uh, <laughs> he was, yeah. he found all the different discrepancies in the Bible and things that didn't quite make sense, and he would, you know, keep asking in front of all the other students so they decided to get rid of jack they they in order for him to finish seminary they shipped him to the other side of the ocean off to denmark to do to do like a sort of like a uh an overseas from far away kind of studying that you know kind of a special yeah. case sort of thing because he was stirring up way too much trouble yeah we'll but, send um, him anywhere just get rid of him yeah. exactly exactly yeah. So the great thing is he did end up graduating from seminary, and he did not like people knowing that for many years uh, afterwards. But then he started, he opened up about it and, and started addressing all this, the kinds of things that he had discovered in, in his books, in addition to the, uh, ancient, uh, the ancient histories that he had discussed as well. And, um, I mean, his thing in life was that he really wanted to leave a legacy of something. Oh boy, he's that, done that, boy. <laughs> Yeah, of something that really mattered to people. And he the, he couldn't think of anything better than to figure out, you know, why we were here, how we got here, who we're here, who's behind, uh, you know, the fact that we're here and all of that kind of stuff. And yeah, yeah. So the um, the Past Shock series, I mean, he wrote uh, probably about seven, eight books that we published, but four of those books were in this Past Shock series. And... um 
you know, it, he's, and the first book was simply called Past Shock. And when it first came out, people would go, a lot of different people bought 10 or 12 copies just to give away to their friends. I mean, there's, there's a few special books that are like that, that you just, it was that kind of book where people just felt compelled to just give it to anyone and everyone they knew of. And, you know, in this book, he talks about how there's more than 30,000 written documents from all over the world that tell of a group of advanced beings who either came to Earth or, or were, you know, or who, who are all here and that were instrumental in helping to create our civilizations and things like that. And it's all Sumerian, Assyrian, Babylonian, the Popol Vuh, and he explored all of these different documents and um, discusses them in this book, Pashak, saying that the gods were here, they created religion to control us in certain aspects, and that um, and that he you know, like he wrote a small book called Is Religion Harmful? And that ended up in one of his later books. Now, when you look at the situation that's going on today, I mean, that would be a good thing to read, Is you know, and it's a question that really needs to be addressed. Is religion harmful? Look what it's doing to our planet to this day. I mean, is it, I mean, it's causing, it's, more people have died in the name of religion than anything else in the entire history of the planet, so. Um, no doubt about that, boy. And my, like my mother used to tell me, she said, there's never been a religion in the world that wasn't a little political. And there's never been a political movement in the world that wasn't a little religious. And so it's two two hands on one body, but the two hands uh, were always controlled by one brain in the middle. The brain in the middle controls both the left and the right. So that's why today in America we have left wing and right wing, because an eagle only has two wings. The idea being is on one side is religion, the other side politics. And the brain in the middle is what we really have been looking for for a long time. What is going on in this world and who is in control of the earth that we live in? Because it is overwhelmingly obvious to me and to a lot of other people that um, we humans as such are not in control of anything. Somebody's in control of this world that is driving it into the ground, destroying uh, Western civilization, warring with and destroying ultimate Eastern civilizations, uh, absolutely destroying not just America and political uh, philosophies, but destroying the entire human uh, presence on the earth by yeah, and- by by causing us to war against each other, and as you said, religions and financing our our wars for us so we can kill each other. Somebody's in control, and Jack, uh, along with many other authors and very uh, highly intelligent people, were talking about the fact that we humans are are actually being manipulated by a higher uh, intelligence, and somebody is out to destroy us ultimately and cause us to kill each other. And uh, so that's what a lot of uh, a lot of good work was done on that basic subject by Jack. Yes, in fact, uh, uh, with all of his research, what he came to conclude was that uh, within our DNA structure, and, you know, there's been a number of different um, uh, ancient texts which talk about the manipulation of the DNA yeah. and the creation of, our, of, the, of humanity, he, Jack called it the slave chip. He believes that we've been embedded with a, with a slave chip that... Uh, to this day, it keeps us, you know, in, it keeps us in line. It keeps us believing in religions. Like we have to, that's where all, a lot of fundamentalist beliefs come from because we're, we've got this slave chip embedded within us. And Jack had, um, written chapters and segments of his work has to, has to do with spiritual freedom. Yes. And he, he believes that we have to break away from this slave chip in order to become really who we are and to get away from this um, programming that has happened that keeps yeah. people stuck. He even wrote a self-help book called Knowing When to Quit, how to get out of dead-end situations like relationships and jobs. Because, And then at, at, that was his first book. But then he realized, well, wait a minute. 
what does keep people in jobs and relationships and in religions that are that have got them, you know, by the neck, they got you yeah. by the throat. And he's turned it towards discovering uh, away from the mainstream certain things, and that's when he found the slave chip and says, "This is what this is the real answer." So he got out of the standard self-help books and got into the real mystery and the, the real deep uh, documents that go into prehistory, and he found thousands of these documents throughout the world to help support him in his uh, quest for who we really are. And he found this thing he called the slave chip. And nobody else really could explain it in a certain sense as clearly as he's done it, but, I mean, there is something in us that kind of keeps us stuck in, you know, religions and relationships and, and jobs that are really like a dead end. I mean, if we really uh, had the guts within us and, and we, if we really had a connection to who we really are in a spiritual sense, we wouldn't be afraid of this. What are we afraid of? That, was he, that is what he was asking. And he, he believes that he found the answer in this slave chip that, that it was embedded within us. Well, you know, when you, you use the term slave chip, uh, you know, my God, that resonates across the board with Zachariah Sitchin and, uh, and what was some of the other, what was that other author we talked about from England? Um, oh, yeah. Christian O'Brien. Christian O'Brien. Christian O'Brien. Christian O'Brien. There's another guy we'll have to talk <laughs> about one day. His book, Christian O'Brien's book, uh, Genius of the Few. Zachariah Sitchin, Christian O'Brien, and, and Jack, and many other uh, authorities were talking about this idea. But when you bring up that chip, uh, the chip that's in us, well, today we don't call it uh, the slave chip. We call it being in compliance. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. um, um, you know, in, a, in America and all the other um, slave uh, civilizations existing on the earth america with all the other fascist uh totalitarian uh you know new world order slave uh countries um uh, the the term is being in compliance mm -hmm. simply meaning if you are not in compliance with the um the politically correct thinking in America today, that is politically thinking today in America, you must be in compliance with. Mm -hmm. And if you, and if you're going to have a different viewpoint, well that's fine, you can have a different viewpoint, uh, <clears throat> because we are great democracy. Well, we were never, we were never to be a democracy, we were founded as a republic. And that's a different word completely, it doesn't mean the same thing. We're not a democratic, a democrat, or democracy, we are a republic. But the idea is that you must be in compliance with the uh, government. And if you're not, you can be, uh, you can have a different opinion as long as you stay within certain perimeters, a very tight perimeters. You can stay within and have a little bit of a disagreement with the way things are, and they, and it's okay. Now the problem is, is if you happen, as Jack has told me many times. If you happen to know something of real value, something that is legitimate and de jour and, and, and real valuable to know about, uh, that's the kind of people that are told you better keep your mouth shut. If you know something really important, you better shut up because in this country you can go to prison. If you know something you're not supposed to know and you start telling the public, uh, you know, you can be in serious trouble. Let me explain that. I think it is germane to what we're talking about. Uh, if you and, say, ten friends of yours uh, go out to a restaurant one night and you're sitting in the back area of the restaurant, about ten or twelve people around the table, and you're all very close friends for many years, you can sit there as long as everybody agrees, uh, you know, but you can sit there and talk about any subject you want, and you can use any language you wish. You can you can use any curse words you want. You can call anybody anything you please, as long, of course, as it's acceptable in the group that you're sitting with. But the point being is that it's a private conversation. 
and private conversations are not covered anywhere on the earth by government, period. So whatever you say in private at a dinner is totally private, and that's, has, the government has nothing to say about that at all. But if you go on radio or television or go out publicly and start talking the way you would at the private dinner, that's different because government is empowered to protect the public. And so government is empowered to protect the public from what you are saying, <laughs> because you might be offending a lot of people, and the, and the government is here to protect the public from your accusations and your words. And so uh, the idea being is that whatever you say in private, the government has nothing to say about it. If you if you go talking about it on national television, uh, using the same terms and language, now you can be put in jail. Now you can get yourself in a lot of trouble. So that's why I was advised you know, some time ago to have a different website in which I put all kinds of inf uh, information which I consider to be possibly harmful to me if people found out or uh, could cause, uh, you know, bad uh, feelings among different research groups or different peoples of the world. Uh, keep it private. Keep your work and your and your research private, because then it's only just for those people who want to know. <clears throat> and so that's why I set up this uh, research website called uh, Gender. Uh, just go on my website to Jordan Maxwell Show, and you will see a banner that says Join the Research Society. Uh, so that's why I have that Research Society website. So I can put up anything I want, and it's private. Now, of course, if you take what I have uh, and, and put it into the public, if you take it off of my website and put it in the public, uh, you may be all right. But if you get in trouble, uh, I'm okay. You know, that's your problem. You don't want to took it off of my private and put it into the public. So that will be your problem, not mine. And so that's why I've done it the way I have, uh, you know, considering the, the things which I now know about broadcasting. There are a lot of subjects you can't talk about. <clears throat> and some subjects you don't want to in public. So... Jack was was the kind of person, uh, you know, he was a very, very dear friend, a wonderful, wonderful dear friend, but he was always open to everything. I don't care how off the wall the subject might be and strange, Jack would entertain it vigorously. He was always uh, willing to debate and discuss and research anything, no matter what it was, and therefore... Uh, he he always came out with extraordinary knowledge. And the thing I want people to know about is the fact that his books, I guess you were the actual publisher of his books, um, and you have them. And so if, if people want to read something really uh, ex uh, controversial and fascinating thinking, uh, Jack Berenger, and, and you can tell us about uh, whatever you have of Jack. So I know that you published a lot of his books, so didn't you? Yeah, well, you probably published about maybe eight or eight, probably about eight of his books. And, um, you know, some of them, like one of them is called Notes from the Christian Circus. It recounts his days back in when he was originally um, – <laughs> embedded in, in the belief systems of Christianity, and he was out looking for the truth, and it was uh, stories about how all of these fundamentalists are, are, were trying to keep him on the path, and every time that he would uh, discover something that would contradict them, it turned into a circus, basically. And so he wrote uh, another book called Rico's uh, uh, Bible Studies, which is uh, um, just basically a... Uh, uh, 15 lessons you would never learn in Sunday school. So he's yeah. you know, he wrote these books on you know religion related, but the the main legacy that he left behind was these books at uh, uh, Pass Shock. I mean, we also published, we also reprinted his book um, Knowing When to Quit because that's that's a real good one for getting out of situations. But the Pass Shock series of books, um, the first one is called Pass Shock, of course. His second book 
is uh, was the subtitle to the first one. It's called uh, The Origin of Religion and Its Impact on the Human Soul, Past Shock Part 2. And mm. then, uh, Part 3 is called Freedom from Religion. And because, um, again, he believed that the gods created the whole concept of religion to keep us in line, and he felt that um, our, our spiritual spark within us was being snuffed out because we were so much inclined toward control. Yeah, yeah control. being controlled, too afraid to do anything else that would <laughs> right. you know, make us shine as the true beings that we were. And then his fourth book out of the series was called When the Gods Return, because he believed that they may be coming back. And when they come back, you've got all these stories about the Space Brothers and these wonderful aliens that are going to come down and save us. And, you know, Jack <laughs> says if yeah. they do come back, you, you better just run for the hills because they, yeah. they, they spiritually raped us in the past, according to Jack. And he yeah. says that it wasn't pretty. And if they're going to come back, what makes what what should make us think that they're going to be all these wonderful you know wonderful yeah well, they're happen. going to be, be something else that they never have been before you know uh, indeed and we even were created Hollywood has made movies and television shows have been made on that one of the mm -hmm. brings to my mind one one of the TV series called um, V as in victory V oh yeah uh, in which uh, in which we are visited here on Earth by extraterrestrials. And they are our dear friends, and they are our helpers, and they've come here to help us. And uh, so, you know, it's the television. You can watch the whole series and, and buy it. And uh, uh, it was produced by Disney, ABC Disney, called V. Uh, there's been two of them. There was an original one many years ago, and then a follow-up just recently, in which uh, the story is, and it was a it was a mini series on television about how visitors came here from other worlds, uh, and they came here to help us and to help guide us spiritually, and and uh, and how they were our dear friends and our space brothers, <clears throat> and then later on in the in the show it begins to show us that these were actually reptilian. Uh, uh, reptilian life forms from other worlds who have come here and they had the technology to cloak themselves so that you would not know, uh, you know, who they really were. They would show themselves to you as something that you would like. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I, I, and, and you really need to think about this. Um, <clears throat> Spielberg did a 19 hour television series. And if you think about how much would it cost, and I've said this before, but I think it bears witness again, how much would it cost if you were to finance, completely finance a motion picture for Steven Spielberg? You need to know, you're going to have to have some pretty deep pockets because his show, his movies are, are astounding. So you're going to be paying a lot of money to finance Steven Spielberg to do a movie. <clears throat> well, uh, on the sci-fi channels, Steven Spielberg uh, produced and, and directed uh, a television series, which was called Taken, T-A-K-E-N, Taken. And it was, I think, 19 hours, a 19-hour miniseries called Taken, Produced and directed by Spielberg. My point is, my God, how much would it cost to finance Steven Spielberg for 19 hours? Yeah, and uh, it's highly recommended. the world has that kind of money? Exactly. You know, and I highly recommend it to, to get a hold of the V series and watch it. And, of course, there's the, the film Independence Day. That, that one was also yes. about yeah. the... And so, but the reason I bring up Taken is because... <clears throat> Spielberg has done so many movies, and I know why. Uh, so many movies like uh, E.T. Uh, and uh, Close Encounters right. of the yeah. Third Kind, and other uh, other uh, artificial intelligence, and other. And of course, he did that uh, that movie series, which was really scary. Uh, I I couldn't watch it myself because it was way too real and too frightening. Uh, it's called uh, Poltergeist. <clears throat> uh, 
about demons and devils and 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 how the the spirit world how really wicked and strange and and offbeat the uh the spirit world really is mm-hmm. it was a it was a, a a series of movies part 1 2 and 3 whatever but uh it was called poltergeist well as i said spielberg did a 19 hour television series called taken in which the main subject was exactly what what uh what, what you know jack was talking about uh about aliens coming here and and misleading us and giving us religions giving us our political uh religious uh military industrial complex and our abducting thousands systems. of us abducting Say it again? Thousands, and abducting thousands of us without our knowledge for the most part that's exactly right yep so uh that whole subject of of aliens coming here from other worlds uh, abducting us, uh, giving us and misleading us uh, into following religions which they have cookie cuttered for us to believe. Uh, all of this, uh, there will be many in the audience, there will be some in the audience who will say, oh, it's a bunch of bull. Well, it may be bull to you, but to Steven Spielberg, he spent 19 hours on the subject. And Jack and spent he, and, and I would years. add to this, I would add to that, Steven Spielberg is a lot of things, but stupid is not one of them. Yep. And, you know, Jack has spent, you know, the seminary graduate, He's, you know, he knew that was to him a dead end. And he uh, he spent thousands and thousands of hours researching all of this stuff. And what's interesting is that the first two books of the Past Shock series talks, it basically basically condenses Sitchin's work down into a much more readable and easy to read format where Sitchin is is pretty, uh, you know, lengthy and, and, yeah, a lot of detail. Jack just gives it, puts it right in your face. This is what's going on. The first two books. And then the last two books of of the series is what does it mean for us today? Because, you know, all these people who like Sitchin, yeah, that's all fine and good, and you find out what really happened back then. But then nobody really even addresses what does it mean for us today. The only other one who's, you know, done that is Neil Freer. But Jack puts it into a real good context with freedom from religion and when the gods return. So this four-book series... <laughs> I mean, I'd like to offer these to people because uh, um, this is Jack's. This four book series is Jack's legacy, and uh, the guy was brilliant. I mean, I, I of I've course met, he was. I've and met very few the people. Other, the other point I'd like to make is that if you ask uh, a young Christian, a Jewish child, seven or eight years old, where is God, and they will point out there into the sky, God is out there. Uh, he's not from Cleveland, Ohio, and so he's out there. Uh, and do you believe in God? Yes. So where is he? Well, he's out there. Uh, and do you believe in angels? Yes, I believe in angels. Uh, all the great religions of the world talk about angels or spirits or jinns or demons or poltergeists or ghosts. Uh, so there are many terms for the concept of of living entities which are here on the earth with us right now, but we cannot see them. But we now scientifically know that that's very possible, and that's probably what's going on. So the point I'm making is that when you uh, understand that there's a a world of uh, highly intelligent creatures which are not from here, uh, but who are dominating us because we can't see them, and we humans uh, are hardwired, it seems, to believe that we are the pinnacle of creation on the earth and that there could not possibly be anything in the known universe as smart as we are, even though we're eating our own children and killing our own selves and murdering our own friends. Uh, you know, But there's nothing in the world uh, that's more obvious that we are the greatest uh, single creation God's ever come up with. Well, once you break through that and begin to see that we humans are nothing more than an animalistic uh, creation like all the other animals, and that the idea is that we're supposed to try and raise above uh, that situation and become godlike in our thinking, 
So again, the, the idea is that there are a lot of people have been writing about the fact that our religions were given to us. Uh, because we're too ignorant and stupid to come up with it. So uh, somebody a long time ago gave us uh, religions and did something in order to promote the ideas that were given so that people would believe them. Yeah, and, and like so Sitchin's, today, and this Sitchin's, is the kind of thing Jack has been talking about. Yeah, and Sitchin's third book, The Wars of Gods and Men, because they, you know, God's... These so-called gods, Jack called them pretender gods, staked out territories, yeah. you know, on the earth. And in order to maintain these territories and status and control over their minions and the different populations, they had us fight their wars for them. And yeah, uh, yeah. also, the ancient Sumerian word for for worship actually means work for. So when we were worshiping the old gods, we were just their slaves working for them. And you know, that's, that's, that's interesting. Uh, and in the modern day word worship, uh, the modern day word, uh, which you just gave us the, uh, you know, the, the etymology of, uh, the very word worship comes from the combining of two words. Uh, the first word is worth, W-O-R-T-H, worth, the R meaning the value of something, what it's worth. And ship is part of our whole Western civilization from friendship and dealership and courtship and scholarship and all kinds of, and citizenship. Everything is ship. And that's a whole different story to get into when you want to talk about maritime admiralty law that nobody understands. We can talk about that later. But the point is that, that there's a whole world of knowledge that uh, has been hidden from us. Uh, purposely, and, and so that's why I totally believe that Jack was right on target when he began talking about how uh, our religions and our concepts and ideas and our belief systems, both in the Eastern and Western world, were given to us by a higher intelligence. And so, again, you ask a child, where is God? And they point out there. Well, unfortunately, uh, if God is out there, that means he must be, by dictionary definition, an extraterrestrial. Something is not of this world. Or uh, we don't. We often use the word supernatural, but that's not a correct term. The word supernatural means natural, but very natural. They're supernatural. Mm. So, the, but the correct term is preta, preternatural, preternatural. Uh, is just the opposite of supernatural. Preternatural means not of this world, not of the world in which you live, not of the, it's no part of your earthly existence in your world that you understand. It's preternatural, not of this world. And so this is the kind of, uh, of, of basis for religions in the world today are preternatural. And there's only one way we could get preternatural understanding, and that is somebody who is not of this world has brought to us all kinds of strange uh, ideas and belief systems in religion, which seem to co uh, coordinate with many religions of the world. You know, many religions have human sacrifice and Gods who died on a cross and were uh, had and had uh, the the mother was a virgin and and they resurrected after three days in the tomb. All kinds of religions. Uh, the last time I looked, there was about fourteen or fifteen different world religions that have the same identical story as uh, as uh, Christianity. And we'll find, and I've said this too many times, but I think it's very important that all three of our major religions in the world today, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, are all three based on a parent religion. All three have come from a far older religion, and that is Hinduism. So Christianity, Judaism, and Islam are actually new renditions of Hinduism. Mm -hmm. Go back and do some research, and you will find that so much of what Islam teaches goes back to the ancient and prehistoric and ancient Greeks who got their, their material from the ancient Hindus. Uh, Christianity is Hindu, and Judaism is just reeking with Hinduism. It's so much 
and and uh, and Judaism is uh, is from the Hindu. So and that's they, a whole story too, because the Hindus, yeah. as we know, and all you got to do is look at their literature and their culture and their pictures, etc., and you can see the imprint of of extraterrestrial presence. They're gods and demons and devils and spirits have come down to lead mankind. That's exactly what I was going to try to <clears throat> wedge myself in there with, is saying that uh, that very same thing. They have the same setup with the, with the gods coming down and, and bestowing um, certain uh, uh, aspects of civilization upon us in exchange for our... Um, yeah, um, acquiescing. Acquiescing. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But um just wanted to lastly say um, that uh, we neglected to mention this, but uh, Jack Berenger um, passed away in early November of 2016. And um, yeah, we lost a great friend. Yeah, he'll be greatly missed. I mean, this guy was one of the most brilliant human beings I had ever had the uh, pleasure to meet in my life. And this was his legacy. I mean, this uh, he... I know he'd really like people to, you know, like to share with people what he came up with. And it yes. was definitely, definitely a, a body of work which is worthy of being explored by anybody who's interested in Sitchin or our ancient history or our true origins. It's something to really look into. 